Hey everyone, and welcome back to Instant Screaming. Today we got Darling and Alice Kills. Both of these should be available on Netflix. Now, first up, uh, Darling follows a young woman only really referred to as Darling, who goes insane after becoming the caretaker of a lavish New York City residence while the uh, madame of the house is away. The film is uh, shot in black and white with a really minimal cast. I mean, really only one and a half characters. Uh, most of the madame's lines are delivered by phone, and there's a guy who shows up sporadically and a couple of extras at the end. And the story takes place over six chapters, and each chapter transitions to the next one with a, uh, a big stylized title card. It's a little weird like that. I'll give this movie a lot of points for being a really jarring and unsettling experience. Something that really effectively uses film as more of a, an impressionist medium than a narrative one. I just don't think that's a good thing. Uh, I've, I've read a lot of places that Darling borrows heavily from Roman Polanski, but I've really only seen Rosemary's Baby, so I can't speak too much to that. I mean, maybe my problem is that I just really don't like Impressionism. I'm not a huge fan of Impressionist paintings, and I really dislike Debussy and most of the other Impressionist composers. It's just my personal taste. So when I'm watching a movie and it's just like a shot of a character standing on a sidewalk and then suddenly it's six clips within two seconds of someone else with odd facial expressions holding different things and then random clips of blood dripping in reverse and now it's a hallway and now we're in a bar. I mean, yeah, it's striking and it gets a reaction but personally I'm more annoyed at the, the visual whiplash than I am awed at the montage. Yeah, it's interesting. It's got a heck of a style. Unfortunately, uh, I just didn't enjoy watching it. Now attempting to continue the theme a little bit, we have uh, Alice Kills. After accidentally knocking her friend Carol off the roof of her apartment building, Alice goes down a rabbit hole of drugs and violence. I mean, her life was pretty nice on paper, but it just falls apart as she goes just absolutely mad. Now, Alice Kills is a, a Descent into Madness style movie that sort of superficially lifts bits of uh, Alice in Wonderland and kind of peppers them throughout the movie as, as dark humor. Now, it's pretty amusing to notice all the references, like the character names. I mean, there's Carol for Lewis Carroll, March, Mouse, but that's about as far as it goes. The strength of the movie is really in its commitment to just really plumbing the depths. I mean, Alice does not go halfway. She starts with kind of odd and erratic behavior and then goes straight to multiple corpses in garbage bags and practically bathing in blood. And it's not, not even in a kind of giggling maniac kind of way, like completely serious and, and depraved. It's interesting. I wish they had gotten there a bit faster. The first half of the movie felt a bit overdrawn, but when they really kick into gear, it's a fun ride, and it actually goes on for a little bit as opposed to just being the end of the movie. Anyway, that's it for Instant Screaming. Hopefully that helps you out. If you have any movies you want to chat about, uh, hit up the comments section below. Otherwise, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, like and subscribe for more videos, and uh, cheers! Cheers! <laughs>